and that's really the business that we're in. Um, one last analogy here, the, the Apollo 11, the space craft that took uh, Neil Armstrong, I always want to say Louis, Neil Armstrong and Buzz Waldron to the moon, spent over 90% of its time off course. Only 10% of its time between the Earth and the moon was on course. The other 90% was all course corrections. And that, in many ways, is the science of what we do, is knowing when to correct the ship by how much an internet is doing. So, Joe's, uh, Joe's component will be slightly more illustrative than mine. Thank you very much. Whether or not to come and contribute to this and the topic being Innovation and Leadership in Asia 2.0, we had, as Coleman said, this, this idea of that we set a vision, or as Kennedy said, we want to put a man on the moon and bring him back. And in a relatively short period, we had a man on the moon and he had come back to Earth. So too, the visions that we have here of the kind of time that we can create in Asia, it's all doable. If you think about us, human beings, we're technolo technological animals. Even our nearest cousins, the orangutans, use tools. In this particular case, one out in Borneo, out fishing. And of course, that wonderful image, one of our great innovations, are opposite some. Some of them are practicing the physical. And then there's the innovation of our brain and the different things it can do and the evolution of that, and the sciences that we now have that allow us to see into brains, to see into things that even a few short years ago, it was not possible to see. And that science is giving us greater refinement on things that we can do at different levels. We come from a long, long history of successful innovation. If you think of the Cambrian explosion several billion, millions of years ago to what we have now, we've got this explosion of ideas and different ways, different levels of creation that's happening now on the planet. This one now we see in the museum. We see how humanity creates new things as destructive as war and the different ways we think of how we can build other people and what we can do to them and how people we can be. But then likewise, we can take this thing and instruct them and then we can look at it and say, is that as Geshe Michael said, an illustration of the thing or is it how we choose to use it? A war act repurposed into an object in the museum. We are each age able to make choices of what we do and how we do it. Art, a war act, an object of death or an object of beauty. Right now we're in a world that feels like it is like a king on Jenga. Teetering with will the financial systems collapse the town. Last century there were three major financial system crashes. So, in all that, how do we as people move forward? The reality is our world is part of constant change, the constant cycle of creation and destruction. And if we compare the things of the past, we're creating and destroying at much more sophisticated levels of greater levels of complexity. And in all this, we have our moments of peace. This too is part of the cycle process. This is a view from the family shack, which is a 20 minute boat ride away from where my family lives in Tasmania. It's where I go as part of my places for personal renewal. We each have these places in our lives and in our hearts. So we have this huge wave of complexity of social change, of financial change, of the environmental challenges that we've been talking about, and the many, many other things that are out in front of us today. But the question is, as leaders in Asia 2.0, are we going to be part of making concerted, deliberate choices to allow us to move up and forward? Or will our choices be part of creating into the void of chaos? And as you said, it is each a conscious choice that we get to make. So, a tough fact. 70, 69% of the largest economic entities, top 175 corporations. So what any change you want to do in the world does involve changing very large corporations in the way they operate. And some of them are here today indicating that they too see their role as they play. If we see those things as things falling, 98% of changes actually fail. The question is, do they actually create the outcome we want? There's innovations out there where the key challenge is not that the innovation doesn't exist, 
they cannot get into that hands of that rice farmer for him to improve his livelihood by 10%. And in many of your organizations, in many, many of your networks, that's the biggest challenge, not the idea, but taking it through. We've done some research with Oxford University and I should say and gone into what are the fundamental dynamics, the fundamental sets of systems that contribute to creating things successfully. What we found there were eight, the one just on the previous slide, people and process, the very obvious ones we're used to dealing with. And then there's the technology, that vast interconnectedness that the internet is giving to us. We see it in social media, big data, and other sorts of insights that we're able to extract. Now, 25 years ago when my father was in it on the East, the ARPNET, it was a small group of people, now it's infinite. Another key system that is often not paid attention to is the whole human emotion and dynamic that is out there, that we each feel. If it comes to us in a way we like, we move with it. If we don't, we move against it. The fundamental dynamics of resistance. Are we connected or are we separated? Another system, the system of values and beliefs that Jesse Michael also touched on. Absolutely fundamental. One of the biggest reasons why people take action. It's something that's congruent with their belief system and one of the biggest reasons why they refuse to move be the incongruence to a poor belief system. The natural cycle of renewal and the whole space and change of a cotton resting out of the harvest, waiting to be harvested and then going into the All these things are cycles that we can work with as we want to introduce. They didn't adjust the moon mission every single second on where are we going. Where are we going? Patient with the earth to things to create it. All of this can sound incredibly complicated, but it is a fundamental system. Either complexity like we see here, here, or simple systems working together to create one overarching whole. What we found is that you can take a design, in this case, a simple pencil and a piece of paper, create a design and a vision. Of course. The bigger challenge that any parent in this room will tell me is how do you raise that child to grow her up to be the adult they would like to see in the world. The vision of the design is the first step. The creating it into reality is so key. As René the Grid said, the treachery of images. This is not a pipe. What we found is that you can go and look at the organizational system. In about three or four weeks, you see the key dynamics that are in play, and then choose what steps do we need to take to bridge these gaps, to take that step by step forward on the journey we want to take, be it to get a man on the moon, bring him back, or to create Asia 2.0. And in that, it's the concentrated deliberateness of what is going on on the game board, on the game board and around. Which pieces can we move and choose? choose to move. Quick capacity building on a particular issue, giving it time to unroll in the next play of where things have happened and then choosing to respond. Ultimately, the key thing is that leaders of Asia are creating Asia 2.0. The choices we make, how present we are, and the actions we take as leaders to create the future we desire.